Hey, good morning, YouTube. It's Saturday morning, beautiful spring day here in Utah. And today I thought I'd make a quick video as I install the RPM bumpers. As you guys know from watching my previous videos, I actually snapped both of my T-bone bumpers, front and rear. Um, honestly, I did it within the first few jumps of each other. And today I decided that I was going to install uh, instead of the T-Bone bumpers, RPM bumpers. And two really cool things that I want to point out that I really am excited about when it comes to the RPM bumpers is first and foremost, um, I could tell right away the thickness level of these bumpers is it, they are actually thicker. If you look closely, you can see there's a definite difference in thickness and there's a difference also in the the type of plastic that you see here so um, I can I can definitely get a sense of a, a little bit more bend it's a little bit more uh, easier to to bend versus the RPM bumpers they are much more thick the other thing that I really like about the RPM bumper is instead of it having a sharp angled bend where it curves, it's actually got a rounded bend, which one of the problems I've been having with the T-Bone bumpers is they've been snapping uh, along this seam. And I'm excited because not only are these RPM bumpers thicker, but they were molded and formed in a, in a way where there's a rounded curve here, which is gonna lend a lot more strength to this section. And not only that, but you can tell that the molding itself was, was designed to include this round curve, whereas this was actually heated and then melted and bent. So, the strength of that is going to be much weaker in both design and in the way it was formed. So I think that's really interesting. Another really interesting thing to point out about the T-Bone bumpers is you'll notice here that there is a, they do actually give you the, the sunken in, you know, facets here for your screws. So they're flush with you know the bottom of the vehicle which is good however if you look on the other side you notice that it's flat right this means that the level of plastic in these four sections where it's been grooved out is actually much much thinner and if you guys recall from an earlier video that I created about three or four months ago one of the problems that I was having with the front bumper was after I had slammed into a concrete curve, it popped all, it popped four, well, it popped these two. The screws literally popped through the plastic and I had to actually come up with a little bit of a, a MacGyver tactic, which I kind of displayed in that video about where I was actually taking um, old shims that kind of were sitting in my park graveyard and I had put those down because the shims are a little bit more malleable. And so when you put a screw through these, it kind of makes them pop up a little bit. So you have to like hammer them down and flatten them out afterward. But it lent more strength so that that wouldn't happen again. So if you are running T-bone bumpers, I do suggest checking out that video and, and running this tactic with your kind of shims that are sitting around in the graveyard. So, but one of the things that I'm really excited about when it comes to the RPM bumper is you'll notice how this is is basically protruding upward on all four of these sections where the screws go in which is basically lending the entire thickness strength to all four of these holes and so it's gonna be literally way less likely for this to have an impact hard enough to where it pops out and the screws pop through these holes. So that's another really nice feature of the RPM bumper. So the other thing I wanted to share with you guys is 
and not very many people realize this, but you can actually run the RPM bumper on both the front end and on the rear. So today I will be installing the RPM bumper on both the front end and the rear. Now the RPM bumper also comes with this special piece right here, which I will be installing on the front end. And I'm debating at this time whether or not I will even really use this piece on the rear end. So we'll find out. Anyway, let's get to the install. Also, for those of you that are curious, the actual part number for the RPM bumper, check out the links in the description of pretty much all of my videos, where over the course of the time since I've owned this, I've compiled a, a huge list of all the parts that I've purchased, well, 90% of the parts that I've purchased, and so quick access to, to those parts. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get this installed. So what, as you can see right here, I've got those four shims that have been inserted first and uh, and they, they did a really good job. So if you are running uh, the T-bone bumpers, I would suggest doing this, especially at least in the front. I don't really feel like you needed it in the back because uh, you know you don't run into things really hard in the back end except for when you land. But I never really had any kind of problems with, uh, with uh, those popping out like I did in the front. Super easy to install these, so these actually sink in well past the surface of the bumper, which is cool. These kind of just drop in. All right, so. There's the front, there's the front bumper. Feels good. Yeah, feels really good. All right, let's jump to the rear. On the rear end, I guess it is optional if you want to install this piece. Technically, it is going to provide a certain level of protection to, to the um, rear suspension mount back here and like any sort of hard landings that come down funky. This little flap right here will you know provide a certain level of protection so do I like the way it looks I guess I don't really mind it yeah I think it still looks pretty cool with it back there I mean it's kind of hidden it's kind of hidden underneath everything so yeah I think I will screw it on I mean why not it's even if it's even if it's just a tiny smidgen more protection I'm all for it I wish I would have uh if you, if you do decide that you want to use this piece, I definitely recommend putting it on first. In fact, putting the front, putting it on the front one first probably would have been easier as well. But it is what it is. Obviously, I won't be able to get my um, drill in there, but I'll just use a an old school Allen wrench to tighten this up. All right, well, let's take a look at this out, out there with the body on and see how it looks. This is a great place to grab it from. It feels nice and sturdy. Check that out, x max rear end. So I'm actually uh, repairing this for a buddy. The uh, bearing exploded inside of the motor and basically had to buy a new motor for him and so I'll be getting that installed and um, also kind of just did a tune up on it so I'm actually excited to throw this thing um, to pavement as soon as I get this new motor in. <laughs> Playing with an X-Max, dope.
All right, so with the body. Here's what it looks like on the front end. Well, those are obviously super easy to install, so it's not like, uh, I know you didn't really need a tutorial on how to install them, but that's what the RPM uh, front and rear bumper, utilizing the front bumper on both ends looks like. So, oh, and just a quick follow up. I am still soaking the broken T-bone so I cut the T-bone bumpers in half and I'm doing an experiment to see if soaking these in WD-40 um, lends a little bit more malleability to that seam so that it's less likely to snap and just more likely to bend. And so check out the follow-up video on that when it drops. It should be pretty soon. Probably let that soak for another 24 hours or so. Once again, guys, I really appreciate you uh, watching my videos and. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that like button for me and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Peace Tactics, out.